Hello. Today it's our final study of the Queen's Christmas messages here on Search for Truth, your Bible teaching program with your Bible teacher Brian Johnston. Our short series about our late Queen Elizabeth's Christmas messages is now to be completed. And today Brian's looking at the Queen's guiding light. Christmas is now here, so I've chosen again for us to enjoy a traditional Christmas carol, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. We'll hear it after Brian's talk, so feel free to join in if you know the words. It'll be unusual this Christmas Day not to have a Christmas message from the Queen, but the media is saying that King Charles III will give his first Christmas Day speech this year and will no doubt speak about losing his mother. We'll have to wait and see, they say, if he has the same warmth and twinkle in the eye as Elizabeth. I wonder too if he will reflect upon the true reason for this season or the fact that the King of Kings was born as a human baby in Bethlehem that first Christmas. Will he make any mention of his own faith, I wonder? We'll just have to wait and see. The character of a man or woman becomes more exposed when they are elevated to a position of power. Some are vain, jealous and ruthless, like King Herod when he slew male babies at Bethlehem after he was told that a new king had been born. Others, such as our Queen Victoria, show kindness and high moral standards. Whether we are of noble or humble origins by birth, the word of God sums up our place in the great scheme of things. Ecclesiastes 3 says, There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant, etc., etc., And the poet Thomas Gray expanded on that with the boast of heraldry, the pomp of power, and all that beauty, all that wealth e'er gave, await alike the inevitable hour. The paths of glory lead but to the grave. That's from an elegy written in a country churchyard. Although the power of our Queen Elizabeth was very low-key and understated, she still had a very strong influence on her United Kingdom and the family of nations of the Commonwealth. She did this by seeking to strengthen the strong bond of love and understanding among the many and diverse individuals she met. She built positive and wholesome relationships. Brian's giving his talk today the title The Queen's Guiding Light and when I saw it I almost immediately thought of lighthouses and then I thought of the Star of Bethlehem as it's sometimes called, the light in the night sky which guided the kings to see Jesus. And Then I recalled the scripture, Thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. All of these ideas came to me and led me to speculate what could be the Queen's guiding light which she faithfully followed for so many years. Let's go to Brian now to find out. Thanks, John. For the 56 countries of the Commonwealth, with populations approaching 2.5 billion people, the Queen was a unifying figure who could seemingly rise above politics, ethnicity or creed. For those in the United Kingdom, the Queen represented for many what it meant to be British. For most people below the age of 80, she's the only British monarch they've ever known. Contrasting with the pleasure-loving, self-centeredness of much of our modern culture, the Queen's values were those of selfless duty, a sense of responsibility and a kindly wisdom. In 2016, the Queen marked her 90th birthday and to celebrate, the Bible Society joined forces with Hope and the London Institute for Contemporary Christianity 
to publish a biography about the Queen's Christian faith. It was entitled The Servant Queen and the King She Serves. In it, the Queen described in her own words her faith in Christ and its place in her public role, in her family life and in her personal times of celebration and grief. And later that year, in her 2016 Christmas address, the Queen testified, Billions of people now follow Christ's teaching and find in him the guiding light for their lives. I am one of them because Christ's example helps me see the value of doing small things with great love. So said our Queen. Quite unforgettably, during the COVID-19 pandemic, the Queen stated, The discovery of the risen Christ on the first Easter day gave his followers new hope and fresh purpose, and we can all take heart from this. As dark as death can be, particularly for those suffering with grief, light and life are greater. Those words of our Queen are poignant now. As dark as death can be, light and life are greater. The Queen has now herself walked the way of the valley of the dark shadow of death. Her final journey, as many newspapers styled it, but based on her personal profession of faith, her experience now is one of light and life. The Bible assures us that the Christian believer has an inheritance waiting for him or her in the realms of light when this life is over. It's a living hope, secured by faith in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who abolished death and brought life to light through the gospel. By her own testimony, Jesus Christ was our Queen's guiding light. A popular Christmas reading is taken from the beginning of John's Gospel, where we read, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and apart from him not even one thing came into being that has come into being. In him was life, and the life was the light of mankind. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not grasp it. John 1, verses 1 to 5. When the text tells us there that the Word became flesh, we know it's referring to Jesus. Those verses mention light and life, the twin themes Her Majesty spoke about during the pandemic. Jesus himself announced that he was the light of the world. In John 9 verse 5. Light is one of the themes of the Apostle John's writings. Is Jesus your guiding light, as he was our Queen's? How true are the words of the famous Christmas song, Silent night, holy night, Son of God loves pure light, Radiant beams from thy holy face, With dawn of redeeming grace, Jesus Lord at thy birth. Jesus Lord at thy birth. Well, as we wish everyone a happy Christmas. And talking of happiness, it seems fitting at this point to recall that the Queen was known for her warm wit and sense of humour, often delivered with a twinkle in her eye. Then there was the Queen's opening ceremony at the 2012 Olympic Games. At Buckingham Palace, she and two pet corgis met James Bond in the form of the actor Daniel Craig. Then travelling by helicopter to the London Stadium, she and Bond, both of them portrayed by actors, parachuted down into the arena full of awaiting spectators. And more recently, marking her 70th jubilee, the Queen also made a royal cameo appearance in which she had tea with Paddington Bear, during which we finally learnt what she kept in her royal handbag. A marmalade sandwich, of course. Now I wonder, what'll you be having for Christmas dinner? Joyful all ye nations rise, join the triumph.
So once again, I hope you enjoyed today's talk. And if you've got a question about any of the talks in this series, then do write in to sft at churchesofgod.info and discuss it with Brian. I'd like to remind you there's no book for these talks, but availability will resume when we begin the next series in the new year. If you want to write in to us, here's our address. Search for Truth. Hayes Press, The Barn, Flaxlands, Royal Wootton Bassett, Swindon, SN48DY, UK. Our email address is sft at churchesofgod.info. Now you may be interested to know that if you go to the website I just mentioned, that's uh, churchesofgod.info forward slash media, you can listen again to many of these broadcasts off-air, that is by audio podcast or MP3 versions. So why not have a go, see what you can find to enjoy. Now, many thanks indeed for the pleasure and privilege of your company today, and I wish you every joy and blessing from God this Christmas. Next week, God willing, we'll be close to the new year, 2023, a time of anticipation and new opportunities. I will hope you'll join me if you can, same time next week. But for now, it's goodbye from our Bible teacher Brian, our producer David, our singers and me, John. So see you again soon, and once more, we wish you a very happy Christmas season and God's richest blessings. Mark the-